Hello viewers. I try and sound a little bit more, well, less like Mickey Mouse's country cousin, really. Um, welcome to another video. Yes, here we are. It's the set of cheapness again. We've got some bling. And we got four likes. We didn't get the 20, we got four. So that's not too bad. So there you go. Two of my scrubby little nails done in purple paint. Because I don't have nail varnish, funnily enough. I do have an old mother. Great respect, though, for you ladies, because, I mean, it was bad enough doing them too. How do you do it with that hand when you be painting with that? Anyway, that, that's beside the point. Two purple nails. Please take care, Mr. R. No, please take note. So what am I going to yabber on about today? Well, today I'm going to talk about Otherworld. Not the Otherworld, but Otherworld Miniatures. Um, the brainchild of Richard Scott. And... I'm rather pleased with these bits and pieces that have just come in. I haven't been holding a lot of stock. I'm building it up slowly. And in one of these build-ups, I bought in the range of human dungeon adventurers. Very old school, very AD&D, very much my sort of thing. Most of which, you know, I, I think I'm going to end up getting myself. And I don't say that very often with miniatures. Now... The ones I really want to concentrate on are his new range of females. Not Richards himself, but you know, the female miniatures. And they're really rather good. He's had Patrick Keith sculpt them, and I'm hoping that that sort of comes up on the webcam and you can get a good look at that. These are really very nice pits and kit. This is the female human ranger, as you can see there. They all get packed in these nice things from other worlds as well. They don't get any bending. As I will show with my next choice. Now, look at that. There is the female human barbarian. That's how it comes. The spear is as straight and crisp as when it was put in. Probably by Griffin, because they do all the casting. And they do a very good job of it. But these are just very nice figures. These are really nice. They're clean. They're uncluttered. You can see everything from a you know a, a gaming standpoint and a personal standpoint. It's lovely to have female characters that are actually properly attired for doing what they're going to be doing. While the male can go into a dungeon wearing full plate mail armor and with sword and shield, most females go in with two handkerchiefs and a smile. There you are, female magic user. That's rather nice as well. DAH16. Um, I've got more, but this is the, I think, the best of the bunch. He's really done a good job on that one. That is the female monk. And that is very nice. I will say, I don't think the painted pictures that Richard's got do the miniatures justice. Um, these in the hands of a very good paint are going to be something very special personally well worth getting I think I think these are very nice and he doesn't only do humans oh no he does all sorts of other things now those are currently in stock these ones aren't but I can get them pretty quickly so what should we start with we'll start with something that you wouldn't normally think of ants giant worker ants look at that now there's got to be a lot of uses for those. They have little separate casting antennae, as you can see, pointed to by the purple digit. And you stick them on and you get them. But these are very nice, crisp little sculpts. And you can see their little heads there. They're lovely little things. Now, those were the giant worker ants. And we have their mates here somewhere. Where are they? Here we are. The giant soldier ants, which have larger mandibles. Try saying that when you've had a few. Yes. They're rather nice. Of course, an ant is just a wingless wasp, really. There you are, a little bit of natural history for you. Harpies. Bit of a job to see, you know, what you're going to get before fully assembled. But nicely done. Very nicely cast. I'm not quite sure who the sculptor was, but I do like those. Not as quite as chaotic as some of the AD and D stuff. Um, we've got. Two versions of Minotaurs. That's version one. And that's version two. More classic, like the Greek mythology. A bull-headed man, really. Notice feet instead of cloven hooves. And 
not actually too much of a size difference between the 25mm character. They're bigger, but they're not so big as to be, oh my god, what's that just turned up? Very popular little miniature. Werewolf. Now, again, size, very nice. No assembly needed on this. But if it's a human turned into a, all right, a werewolf, a lycanthrope, or whatever, whatever, is there going to be that much size difference? You know, I mean, it gets a bit. Sometimes you see the things and they're massive, and you start off from a little human and you end up with an enormous werewolf. It's a bit like the Incredible Hulk. He changes from Bruce Banner into the Hulk, and all of a sudden, his trousers are still fit. Well, what goes on? He's suddenly about fifty times the size he was, and his trousers are still fit. The belt still works. What goes on there? Well, it is weird, isn't it? I mean, you've got to admit, it is a bit daft. Even for a comic. Frogs. I think John Pickford did these. Or Ian Brumby's brother, um, Ian of Fenris Games, who you can get all sorts of wonderful things from. But just to make things even more annoying, his brother is a very talented um, sculptor. Joe Brumby, that's it. Uh, Smog, Snog, or whatever he calls himself. He doesn't get online much. He just creates very nice bits of kit. I think this one might be his as well. Look at that. Giant toad. I mean, you just want to own that, don't you? That is just nice. I like frogs and toads. Sadly diminishing the poor old toad. But that is a very good toad. They're just some of the highlights you can get from the other world range. Don't forget to have a look at his giants. I haven't got any here to show you, but uh, if I can splice in a picture or something, I will. If not, have a look at the site. Cloud Giant is wonderful. Cloud Giant is very nice. Real old school AD&D stuff. Very nice indeed. And for some of his latest, and these I can show you because he kindly sent me a little packet of them, Goblin melee weapon. Goblins were bows and slings, really, but there you go. Look at that. There he is. These are only just out. There's the back of him. And there's one with a bow. I have to say, I'm not a great goblin lover. Goblins and orcs I've never been overly fond of. But um, these are nice. These are nice. These will hopefully, if ever I get back to it, end up on my painting table and I shall attempt to paint them. And you might see the painted offerings in a future episode. But there you go. And so they're going to be in the shop ready for pre-order, hopefully by the end of this video, if I get things all going right and nothing goes wrong. For the first time. Anyway, two purple nails for four likes. If you want more purple nails... Well, like some more, but I really don't want to do it again. I've got to figure out a way of getting this off. Now, this is, this is Shane, you see. I bite my nails. I've got to eat that. If I don't see me again for the next video, you'll know what's happened. Thankfully, it's water-based stuff, I think. It's an old Citadel. That's actually Worm Purple from, from, from the original paint sets. Worm Purple. It's going back to about 1984. It's the only one I've still got, but it's still going. Right-ho. See you later. TTFN. And uh, if you like it, like and subscribe. And if you don't, oh well, keep it for Halloween or something. You can always frighten, frighten the trick-or-treaters. Cheerio. Bye-bye.